Hello guys, Aloy Andalus from MBFX and Effective Technical Directors and today we will see how to do distraction in 3ds Max. Here are some cool shots from Scanlan Visual Effects. They did an amazing job on the last season of Game of Thrones. I was working on it. I want that you see the importance of nice fragments. You can see that there is a lot of simulation going on, but a lot of times this simulation is covered on fire, in smoke, and at the end what you see is the shape of the fragment. So it's really, really important to have nice fragments. For far away shots, you will go with procedural fragmentation like Boronoi. We can use Ray Fire or we can use Thinking Particles. It has some built-in Boronoi fracturing, so it's automatic and then you can add noise. But for close-ups, it's really important to have really nice shapes. So for that, we can use Fast Cutter from Joe Scar. He started developing this tool for the movie 2012. Uh, on these cuts, you can see some of the nice frags. It uses Provolene from 3ds Max under the hood, but allows us to do it in a very fast way and in a very artistic uh, control. Then Paul Fuller created Razor. It's similar to Fast Cutter. It has some difference. So we will see both tools and how we can use it in production and how they can help a lot, a lot the artist and save a lot of time. Here are some examples. Imagine that you have concrete. Concrete, you will cut it differently than if it's wood or another material. Uh, so right now I assign a shortcut to Razor and basically I press the D, that is my shortcut for, you can define whatever you want, and I can draw a line and automatically cuts the piece using ProBoolean, so it's super fast. You can cut one piece or multiple pieces at the same time, depending if you select one or multiple pieces, and it has a built-in noise, so you will have a lot of detail on the frags. Really important. Automatically, you will have a different wireframe color, so you can identify very easily the different cuts that you made. Assigns correct IDs to the sides, even if you don't have a multi sub object applied, that is a problem with Propolean. And until now, you could do this procedural, but let's imagine that you want to cut a masonry wall made of bricks. It breaks differently than a concrete brick. Normally, the mortar that unifies is less strong than the rest of the brick, normally 30%, and it will always break on this part, on the mortar part, so it needs to be very precise. And here is where drawing a line is super helpful, and you have a lot of artistic control to define where you want to break it. You can see that we did a cut already, you can always go back, and this script as well, if some boolean will fail, automatically has a way to check if the new mesh created after the boolean is good or not. If it's bad, it will try to go back and recut it. So you will never end up with a bad geometry, because always it's applying some filters to check that the final result is good. As we will see later, we can do this with 3ds Max without the scripts, but it takes a lot of time. You can see that now we have a very nice fragment here created. Another good thing about Razor is that it always keeps in memory all what you do, so always you can go back in time. It's not the Control Z of 3ds Max, it's totally independent of the Control Z, so at any time you can choose whatever fragment you create and go back to the original file that you, you had. Now we have here another material, it's good, and we will need to cut this. Also, this will, we will not cut this as bricks. For that, the hood normally gets kind of a splinters when it's broken, so you would like to see that uh, when you have a distraction of wood. For this, instead of using normal noise, on Razor we have the option to go with a standard noise, and we will create uh, this very high frequency noise to create this kind of a splinter result. We will keep cutting a different length, different sizes, you will never like to have the same type of fragment, always different and random. Also, cut it in different directions depending on the good panels, so it's important to do it manually. And finally, we can attach some of them together, so when this element explodes, you have a really nice, cool looking piece. Sometimes with fire or smoke, it's much more important that the fragment looks nice than the overall simulation look of it. Razor has much other uh, functionalities like auto cutting, rift, and way more. And the principal difference with fast cutter, the fast cutter works in a similar way. I will say that fast cutter has more built-in 
functions to create complex stuff. You can, for example, cut a low res object and then later reapply the cuts on a high res object and things like that. Razor is a more condensed script. I like it a lot because it's very simple and I can do it very fast. At the end, both scripts are really good. I would say that if you want more complexity, go with, with fast cutter. If you want something more simple to cut in an easy way, Razor can be your tool. You can get both tools in EffectiveTechnicalDirectors.com, I will have the link below, and we will see now how to do the same in 3ds Max. We can cut exactly the same, but it will take kind more time to do it. Let's redo it with a box. I will use Freehand, the new splines tools in 3ds Max, and I will basically draw following the mortar as we did before. Now we can move the spline closer to our object and apply an extrude modifier. And let's extrude this. So you can see that right now the spline has different segmentation. That's because that we have adaptation going on. Turn it off for this example will be way better. And we can define here the interpolation segments. You can as well add a normalized spline. This way you can control how many segments you want on this spline that you created before. And on the extrude, select as well the number of steps that you want and add a noise in top so you will get some more detail uh, adjust the noise as you wish and now let's add a boolean modifier we have booleans introduced in 2018 these are new um, subtract and you will see that now it's done but if you add an edit poly in top and check elements because the plane is not shelled it's not dividing it into elements, so it needs to be a shelled object. Simply add a shell in top of your plane. You can always go back to your elements and turn the shell to zero. So basically it's totally flat, but now the, it's a split in two elements. I like to use randomized elements by Bochita. Basically it randomized elements, so it's a free script. Simply apply it and now it will do kind of like an explode in Houdini. So you can see the elements, how, how they detach. Remember that this boolean is totally procedural. At any time you do, can do any modification. Right now, for example, I am copying as an element the cutter and the boolean is updating in real time. So we have the cut applied or you can change the shell amount of the cuts or whatever you want to do. And that's something cool that the boolean can do. But one problem that we had is that it's not retaining the IDs of our materials. That's because if in boolean or the all pro boolean or pro cutter, if your object has not applied beforehand a multi sub object material, it will not apply the correct ID. Uh, so right now I will do it, but it's something that, for example, fast cutter does it automatically or as well razor. It will detect if you don't have applied a multi sub object ID and it will do it for you. So you save time at the end. In this case, I will create a multi sub object material, reapply it to our cutters, and now if you reselect them, it will work. But as you can see, it's, you need to think beforehand to have applied a multi sub object material. Uh, you can always do it later, but now I apply the ID2 to, to this side object. So as you can see, you can cut in 3ds Max. But if you need to do a lot of cuts and when you are in production and you need to destroy a tower or a house, you need to really do a lot of cuts. You can pass one to this cutting. Razor and Fast Cutter really streamline a lot your work. It makes work way faster. It helps in a lot of other things I didn't say, like if you have attributes in one object, it will transfer to the new pieces. If the pieces are linked to one object, the new objects will be still linked to this. It will keep the parents or it will keep the animation if the original object is animated and so on. So it has a lot of tools built in during production. They have been used for now over 10 years in production and improving over all this time. So they are really reliable tools and I hope that you like it. Check it out on Effective Technical Directors. Right now we have the Black Friday, it's still going on. We have other tools like Storm, or TP Debugger for advanced debugging stuff in Thinking Particles. We have a lot of courses related to Thinking Particles, some with Houdini. And as well, remember that we have a forum mostly related for technical direction things, more Maxcript, Houdini. Thank a lot to my 
Patreons to make all these videos possible and trying to keep doing these videos, sharing information of 3ds Max, consider being a Patreon. If not, comment, like, subscribe, click on the bell, it's important so you will know when there is new videos available. And thank you so much guys, see you soon.